Hi YouTubers. I want to show you in this video a very simple and inexpensive way to make your own hydrogen water, molecular hydrogen water or H2 water it's called. If you haven't heard of this, um, I've linked a website below which has a lot of background and research. It's really very, very comprehensive on the benefits of this and why you might want to try it. It's, it's been uh, it's been researched quite a lot in the last few years and there's uh, over 600 peer-reviewed studies on it and it is found to be effective in treating over 150 different conditions in the body. In inflammation, uh, it's an antioxidant, it's, uh, they think it might be a novel signaling mechanism uh, for uh, various benefits. Uh, anti-allergic effects, anti-cell death effects, many things they checked it against and it seems to work on everything. I think practically all our organs love this, uh, this H2. So uh, there's a lot of water machine makers. The only, the only way really that you can find it now commercially water machine makers and there's, there's pill, pills that you can drop in water they claim you can just drop them in and drink it. I don't believe that's going to work too well. I think if you use these bottles that I'm going to show you and uh, use maybe the same technique, you'll get 0 0.5, 0 0.6 maybe parts per million with the pills. They are a dollar piece too, so the way I'm going to show you, you can get 3.0 three, uh, 3 parts per million and it's very inexpensive. I calculated it out to about three cents a, a, a glass for this. So. The least expensive, most effective. How can you beat that? You gotta try it, right? If you're gonna try it, at least I would. I uh, didn't want to pay two thousand for for a water machine, but I knew I wanted to try it after looking at that website. So anyway, we're using the same actually technique that the pills use, minus one ingredient. They have a filler in here which I don't like, mannitol. And uh, if you're doing any research on that. At least I, I didn't want to ingest that for any length of time. Uh, binder, I should say. I think that's how they keep the pills together. This has none of that because we don't need it. We're putting just the magnesium and uh, malic acid into the bottle and reacting it and then uh, using our pressure to get it into solution. The magnesium I'm going to show you to use is uh, these rods which you can buy on eBay or you can get them on Alibaba. Uh, they are about $250 to $4 per rod, about 43 or 4 grams each, and 99.99% uh, pure, which I, I'm, I have confidence in that figure. They, they come very well packaged. They're, they're uh, produced by a large uh, company in Hong Kong, MGA. I don't know why they're, they're an entertainment company, but maybe they use those uh, for some sub-product or something. Anyway, I have confidence in those rods. The other is food grade malic acid. You want to get some of that? And I'll show you how to do it. Uh, we're going to react. Most of the hydrogen is produced by the reaction of the malic acid and the hydrogen in and the magnesium in water. There is some, you'll, if you do, if you'll do any uh, research on it, there, magnesium will react with steam very vigorously and it'll react somewhat with with uh, boiling water, which is what we're using, it will not hardly react at all at room temperature. It's almost considered non-reactive. So the, the water machine makers that have magnesium in their filters, I don't think they're going to put a lot of hydrogen in. Most of the, you know, they make some pretty, pretty wild claims for some of those machines. I think most of them are, are going to get maybe 1.0 parts per million, uh, plus or minus at best, some of them hardly anything. These pills you can get maybe 0.5 or 0.6 using this method I'm going to show you. So if you're, if you're going to use pills I would recommend the boiling water in a, in a tight container. Uh, this however just requires the, the rods, the acid, and the container. So I'm going to show you how to, to do that. It's very simple, really simple. 
by the way, I want to mention the when you react uh, the magnesium with an acid, you also get a salt of magnesium, which in this case with the malic acid will be magnesium malate, which is a very good supplement of magnesium. So we are getting our magnesium levels up there, which most of us need. There's, uh, I read something, maybe 90% of us are deficient in magnesium. So that's a very good way to supplement it. The, the disadvantage is that you can get a lot. If you drink, uh, I was drinking maybe six or seven or eight of these a day, and so I started to get a little diarrhea, so I just backed off. If you happen to have uh, compromised kidneys, that don't filter so well for any reason, I would probably check with your doctor before and just find out if it's okay to supplement magnesium because that's, that's what we're doing besides getting the hydrogen here. We are getting a, a fair amount of magnesium and uh, you might not want to do it or just do a, less of it if, if you uh, have that condition. That, that's the only condition I think that you can have and really have a problem with magnesium uh, being, being uh, you know, overload or uh, overdose, whatever you want to call it. So in any case, uh, we're getting some reaction with the rods, with the rods by themselves with boiling water. I did that experiment and it only gets you maybe 0.2 or 0.3 parts per million. We want higher, so we're going to use the acid and we're going to use uh, the boiling water. So I'm going to show you first of all, let's go ahead and put, uh, load up one of these. Let me turn up my water a little bit, get it boiling. And uh, we want two grams of this. These, everything's, I, you know, arbitrary. I, I tried different combinations. This is what I found could get me about three, 3.0 3 parts per million. So this is what I'm using. Two grams of this, which is, this is a quarter teaspoon. It turns out that uh, that is about a gram. So say two grams of the malic acid are going in here. Right into the bottom. By the way, you could use other things, sport bottles. With the high pressure though, I found those are very hard to open. Some of the people that I tried uh, to introduce this to said they, they just couldn't open that with the high pressure. These actually work pretty well, the aluminum beer cans. I don't like the aluminum myself, but some people don't mind that. So this is what I've settled on anyway. These are a couple bucks of your, your beer brewing bottles, easy to close, uh, can snap it right down and get enough pressure to create the, uh, the concentrations that I'm, I'm uh, saying we can get here. So then we're just going to load the uh, rods up. soon as we can. It, it already goes down a little, but you want to try to get it as tight as you can. And go ahead and put the top on. And it's kind of hot, so I use this. Center that so it's even there. And then just snap it down. And that's all ready to go. So we've we set in motion the fastest hydrogen creation we can with the boiling water, the acid, and the rods. And now we want to force it into solution. The way we're doing that, by the pressure, the higher the pressure, the uh, 
So the concentration is actually going to be proportional to pressure and inversely proportional to the temperature. So we're going to start, we want to start bringing the temperature down as fast as possible now for maximum, uh, maximum solubility there. So that goes into the freezer. And you want to note the time because <laughs> I have a fear that I'm going to freeze a bottle one of these days and big deal, so I lost a $2 bottle uh, and have a hydrogen ice cube in there and a bunch of glass. But so far not. Try, try signs, set a, set a timer, whatever. I wouldn't go over an hour and a half, hour 45, and then you can start to see little ice starting to form. It would probably take really to break the bottle You'd have to leave and forget about it. But anyway, just something I think about sometimes. Uh, so that's all it takes to put it in. Now I want to do I want to do a little uh, testing on it, so you'll have maybe a little confidence that this actually works. So the way we're going to do that, there's this product called the uh, H2 Blue Hydrogen Test Kit. It's a reagent. That you can put in hydrogen rich water and uh, it comes out blue and it, it will turn clear if you have hydrogen rich water and so you want to count the drops to uh, to see how what your concentrations are so I have a I have a bottle that's been in the refrigerator uh, it's gone over three hours now I recommend three hours seems to be about optimum so this may have, may have started to degrade a little, probably from leakage. Hydrogen is a very small molecule. I've even heard it can go through glass. Most of it's probably around the seal. But, uh, so, I originally thought the longer you leave it in, the better and the more concentration we're gonna get. I don't think that's the case. I think you hit your limit of your uh, container and start uh, losing more than it's going in doesn't seem to be a whole lot of bubbles going on anymore anyway so let's go ahead got a little bit sometimes you get a little bit louder pop so I may have gone a little over on this this measured it anyway uh, so uh, by the way you can see the bubbles starting to come out you want to drink this you know pretty quickly probably best to just drink it right down it's about this this is about a 16 ounce container with a minus the rod volume is probably 15 ounces. So drink it, drink it soon. And uh, let's go ahead and measure it though to give you a little confidence that this actually works. The uh, test kit says put in six milliliters and each drop will be uh, represent 0.1 parts per million hydrogen concentration. So, since I use so many of these drops, I try to conserve it by going half of the amount and then figuring that the drops represent 0.2. So it's probably not as accurate, definitely not as accurate, but close enough. So let's go ahead and measure this that we just took out. One drop, starts out blue, clear. We're gonna count the drops. Two, get a little on the side there, clear. Three. Four. Thirteen. 
13, just barely clear. We're running out of gas here. Okay, that's uh, 2.6. So, like I said, I think we left it in a little too long. I left it in a little too long. That stuff stains. Watch that. That, that container is not the best. It leaks a little. Um, so anyway, that measured 2.6. I can tell you that I've been getting 3 to 3.5, maybe a little under, depending on you know how close to three hours I'm uh, taking it out. Also, these little uh, these tops on these bottles they get a little weaker. I've noticed as they go on, you can replace these. The uh, the seal on that, I think somebody told me 15 cents. So <clears throat> you may want to tighten those every now and then. When you, uh, if you're noticing, maybe it doesn't pop quite as loud. The pop seems to be the biggest biggest indicator that uh, that we have a good uh, seal there and we've had some good pressure. So there you are, that, that tested 2.6, which is still about two and a half times your best machines and about five times these drops at a dollar a uh, dollar a pill. The, uh, the cost of this, like I said, is about three cents. I calculated the, the rod loss di uh, divided by the cost of the rods and uh, the cost of the malic acid came out to about three cents, pretty good. So that's, a, that's basically, I wanna show you one more thing about this. Uh, when you're taking them out and putting in a new, putting them back in for another batch, these rods, let me see if I can get one out here, they get a little deposit on it, which is uh, the oxide, I believe the oxide of the magnesium, which comes from the, the magnesium and water reaction. So just a little bit there. This rod is actually pretty silvery, but as a matter of matter of uh, procedure. I usually just clean them anyway. So I'll just drop them in some pure vinegar, just cheap vinegar here for uh, maybe a minute is all. It doesn't take long. It reacts like crazy and it will take off. reacting a lot, probably produce a lot of hydrogen there. Uh, and then just pull them out. Rinse them off and you can see that one is now bright and shiny again. So it took, took less than a minute. That one's like new. So that's how I clean all those in between batches. So, let's see, I think that's it. If I forgot to tell you anything, I will uh, comment it below or uh, you, can, you can comment and ask questions if you'd like, I'll respond. But anyway, this is a, a wonderful protocol. I think it's probably uh, the health breakthrough of my lifetime, which as you can tell, quite long. And I've tried a lot of things, and this is the one thing I've tried that you can notice within a day or two, the uh, increase in energy and the decrease in aches and pains, probably from inflammation. So I hope you give it a try, and good luck and good health.